now let us take uh, our Microsoft Excel and we will use Microsoft Excel to solve the uh, two equation and two unknowns problem using the Gauss Seidel method. Uh, what I will do first is I will uh, use the Gauss Seidel method in, in the form that we, uh, we have the original equations in that means equation number 1 I will use it to obtain the value of x 1 and equation number 2 I will use it to obtain value of x 2. As we have said there was uh, nothing special about calling this particular equation as equation 1 and this equation as equation 2. So, what we have done is we have uh, interchanged these two equations and even after interchanging these equations uh, what uh, we will end up with is the same point is going to be the point of intersection of the two lines. And what we will do in both these methods is that we will start these methods from the origin. So, initial guess is x 1 is going to be equal to 0, x 2 is going to be equal to 0. Okay. So, because it is a Gauss Seidel method uh, what we do the at, at the second iteration our x 1 value is going to be equal to 2 minus 2 multiplied by the x 2 value from the previous iteration. That is how we do the Gauss Seidel method, because in the Gauss Seidel method the newest values are essentially going to be used in order to compute uh, the next value of x 1 or x 2. Okay. And x 2 for x 2 what we will do is x 2 is going to be equal to 7 minus 2 times x 1. Okay. In case of a Jacobi iteration, we will always use the previous iterant value in order to compute the new value. However, in the Gauss Seidel method, we will use the newest value. So, x 1 the previous value was 0, but in the second iteration, uh, we have replaced the value of 0 with the value of 2. Okay. So, that is the value that we are going to use and this whole thing is going to be divided by 3 and that is going to be our uh, new guess uh, uh, sorry the new solution value that we will get from this particular equation. Okay. And we can then keep continuing this downwards and this and let us continue this for 10 iterations. So, oh, this should be iteration 1 this one initial is the 0th iteration. So, this should be iteration 1 and 2. I will just drag this see what I have done is uh, really clicked on the right edge and then just dragging it down and we have 10 iterations. Okay. And at each time what we also need to do is compute the uh, relative error okay. and the relative error is going to be nothing but the absolute value of the difference between the current and the previous value divided by the current value. Okay, and this is the error in so, okay, so that is the error in uh, x 1 and likewise we will have error in x 2 as well. Okay, and for error in x 2 we are just going to drag this to the left hand side. Okay. So, this is the error in x 1 this is the error in x 2 we will click f 2 and just confirm that okay, this is what it ought to be and we will just drag this and see how the error is changing and when the error actually becomes less than a predefined uh, tolerance value that is the time when we stop our iteration. Okay. So, what happens over here is that the error does not keep decreasing uh, with the number of iterations uh, and what we are actually seeing over here is that the uh, one of the values x 1 is going very negative whereas, uh, x 2 is becoming a very large positive value. So, clearly what we see is that the solution is diverging. This is what we expected based on the analysis that we had done earlier. We will do is we will use the two equations, but the 2 x 1 plus 3 x 2 equation we are calling this as equation 1 and uh, what was equation number 1 previously we are calling this as equation number 2. Okay. 
and we will again have initial values as 0 we will start from the same initial values okay. and we will indeed continue in a very similar manner as before. error okay however we won't be using uh, the same expression as before instead we'll be using 7 minus 3 times x2 divided by 2 as a means to calculate x1 format cells subscript Again, this is in order to avoid confusion. Okay, and f uh, our x two is going to be equal to four minus x one, and again the x one is going to be the new value x one divided by two. Okay. So, this uh, so from 0 our x 1 va value has gone to 3.5 from 0 our x 2 value has gone to 0 0.25 we will just select this and drag it to see where these solutions are leading us. Okay. Uh, if, if we recall our solutions were 2 comma 1, so we are getting closer and closer to the solution and we will need a few more iterations in order to reduce the error to the level that we desire. Okay, we need 10 to the power minus 3 at least as the accuracy. So, let us go and do this a little bit more, maybe I will just expand this cells a little bit further. Okay, so, our accuracy is not yet met we are looking for our epsilon, the error epsilon to go below a tolerance value of 10 to the power minus 3 that is when we will stop our iterations. Okay, this is when the solution the error value has gone below 10 to the power minus 3 and this is what we will take as an approximate solution from the iterative method. Okay. So, uh, to recap what we have done so far, we took two equations in two unknowns, we wrote them down uh, in this particular form as well as in this form. The difference over here is that the equation 1 in this case is taken as equation number 2 in this case, equation 2 in the, uh, in the first case is taken as equation number 1 in, in this particular case. Uh, what we saw is that when the, uh, in, in the first example the diagonal dominance condition was not met as a result our solution diverged uh, whereas in the second uh, example the di diagonal dominance condition was met and uh, what happens is that we indeed finally reach the desired solution. Okay, the solution is accurate to, to the accuracy that uh, we have asked our solver. If we say we need a greater accuracy we need to go ahead and do a few more iterations and I can show you the results. Okay. And if let us say we, we were to ask for an accuracy of 10 to the power minus 4 this is the solution that we will get and let us see the number of iterations that are required. So, this is the initial guess so that is the 0th iteration this is the first iteration okay. and I will just drag this. Okay, and we require 29 iterations if the error uh, tolerance is 10 to the power minus 4 and if the error tolerance is 10 to the power minus 3 we require 21 iterations and just the way we did for the Gauss Seidel method we will do uh, we will solve the Jacobi method in a similar manner. change the font size okay. 
okay okay so we have iteration number x1 and x2 we will compute in the same manner and then errors again we will compute in the same manner okay so what again what i'm going to do is i'll go back and copy paste this rather than having to redo it myself again because nothing really changes over here okay and i'm getting this hash signs because the error i'm defining as uh, the difference between the two divided by this particular value and this value uh, because no value is specified over here is taken as 0. So, this is uh, equation 0 divided by 0 as a result of which we get hashes. As soon as we populate these results we will not get hashes and it will be replaced by the appropriate uh, numbers over there. Okay. So, we will have number of iterations. Okay, and we'll just drag to say 15 iterations, and we start with x1 equal to 0 and x2 equal to 0. Okay, x1 the way we calculate does not change because x1 is the newest uh, value all the time, so the calculation of x1 does not change. The calculation of x2 is going to change. So I will copy paste it and then show you how we change the way uh, we compute x2 using the Jacobi iteration. Okay. So, this is so the pasted value is for the Gauss Seidel method, it is not for the Jacobi method. Okay. So, in Gauss Seidel method, we have 4 minus the latest value of x1 divided by 2. This is not how the Jacobi iteration works. In Jacobi iteration, we do not use any of the values in this particular row, we will use only the values in the upper row. So, what I will do is I will just take this particular cell. Uh, look where my cursor is, my cursor is at edge of the cell, it changes from uh, you know a plus sign like, well, like a white cross type of a sign to a cross arrows type of a sign over here. When it changes to this type of an arrow, uh, this type of a sign the cur cursor, I will click the left key with the left mouse key depressed that particular plus uh, arrow sign has disappeared. Now, I can move this anywhere. So, as I move this uh, my uh, mouse along, you can see this blue color square moving and as the blue color square is moving, this particular formula is changing. So, I will move this blue color square from the new value of x1 to the old value of x1 and that should give me the Jacobi iteration okay. and I will click enter and this is the result from the Jacobi iteration. Okay, so, to recap what we do in Gauss Seidel method is we use only the latest value in Jacobi iteration we use only the values from the previous iteration and not the latest value. So, in this particular case the value from previous iteration are 0 and 0 uh, as a result for uh, the uh, for the Jacobi iteration we compute 4 minus m4 m sorry 4 minus m6 and not 4 minus m7 as was done in the Gauss Seidel method. Okay. We will just highlight this entire row and drag it for 15 iterations and see what we are getting. Okay. In 15 iterations our solution has not yet converged, let us go to say 40 iterations as before okay. and I will select this particular row. And instead of dragging the row downwards, if the row adjoins uh, another row which we, uh, the column adjoins another column which is full, we can actually just double click at the right end and it, uh, the Excel will fill itself. Okay. So, I have double clicked over here and Excel has filled the values and we want uh, our overall error to be 10 to the power minus 3 at least. So, we need to drag this a little bit further. Okay, we have still not reached yes. So, finally after 54 iterations we have reached the solution okay. whereas in the Gauss Seidel method we reach we have reached the solution in only 21 iterations. 
uh, the reason why this happens uh, in the Gauss serial method uh, against the Jacobi method is because the Gauss serial method uses the latest values of the variables whereas the Jacobi iteration you uses the previous iterant values of, uh, of the variables. Okay. However, both these methods have linear rate of convergence. So, although in this particular example we were able to see such a big difference in the number of uh, iterations required for uh, the Jacobi iteration to com converge compared to the Gauss Seidel iteration. Uh, in general the experience has been that the Jacobi iteration is able to converge uh, fairly rapidly uh, uh, I mean as rapidly as a typical Gauss Seidel iteration. Uh, in general I find that using a Gauss Seidel method to be a more preferred method and the reason for this is, is that uh, when we are solving this overall equation by the Gauss Seidel method we only need to keep in uh, n number of values when we have n variables. So, every time we recompute the variable we do not need to store the previous value.